through all this rainy and cold morning. So today, your hosts are myself, François Bertolo, engineer at Opal RT Technologies. Our demo lead, my colleague Amin Yaman, our EMS team leader from Opal RT Technologies, uh, will be presenting as well. And we are very pleased to have our special keynote speaker, Eric Lempicker, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Here is the presentation outline for today's webinar. So we will start with a brief microgrid introduction and talk about the challenges related to real-time simulation for microgrids. We will then be presenting four different applications, have a live demo of a microgrid connected to a distribution system. Our colleague from MIT Lincoln Lab will present his microgrid controller HIL demo platform and we will uh, have a brief conclusion before having a period for your various questions. So first, an introduction to microgrids. Well, the uh, definition of the United States Department of Energy microgrid exchange group goes like this. A microgrid is a group of interconnected loads and distributed energy resources within clearly defined electrical boundaries that acts as a single controllable entity with respect to the grid. A microgrid can connect and disconnect from the grid to enable it to operate in both grid connected and island mode. At Opal Artis, our vision on microgrid's real-time simulation goes like this. Initially limited to the most classical power system components, microgrid simulations are now expanding to very detailed power electronics and, most important, the interaction between the two. So what we're seeing here is that classical power system components of microgrids are typically wind turbines, PVs, energy storage units, generators, transmission lines, loads, controls, AC grids, and now we're coupling all this with power electronic components such as wind turbine converters, PV inverters, energy storage inverters, and grid tie inverters. Now, one thing that is very important is how can we have a real-time interaction between those two groups of components. Now, at Opal RT, we also consider that ship power systems and more electrical aircraft can be considered as microgrids, mainly because they bring the same uh, type of challenges in terms of real-time simulation. So the first challenge related to power system is actually the fact that there are complex AC systems with very short lines that need to be simulated in real time. So when we're simulating large microgrids and distribution systems uh, that they are connected to, parallel processing is required in order to distribute the computation load. Parallel processing necessarily implies using various decoupling techniques that are based on line propagation delays. Okay? And these decoupling techniques with delays, well, they can be compensated in AC systems with long transmission lines, uh, but long transmission lines are typically not available in microgrids. So our solution to this at Opal RT is called Artemis SSN, and SSN states for State Space Nodal. And it's actually a power system solver that takes advantage of both state space and nodal approaches, giving it the capability to first solve state space tasks in parallel on different processors. So therefore, we can benefit from uh, the parallel computing capabilities of the system. And then compute all the common admittance nodal equations on a single processor, therefore not introducing any artificial delays. Okay? And uh, all this is actually occurring within the same real-time simulation step, this technology being unique to Opal RT technologies. So Artemis SSN allows power systems engineers to decouple a microgrid, well, first without introducing any artificial delays uh, due to the decoupling technique in use. It's also helping to decouple microgrid without being a parallel computing expert or a CPU architecture expert. And finally, you can decouple your microgrid without using or adding long transmission lines or stub lines only for the purpose of achieving successful numerical simulation. 
The second challenge related to uh, the fact that there are several fast power electronics in uh, today's microgrids. So power converters play a very important role in microgrids. Due to their dynamics, they have to be simulated at faster rates compared to the AC system we just talked about. So for viable accuracy to be achieved, update rates below 2 microseconds typically need to be reached by the simulation platform. Okay. And based on our experience, we have seen that those performances can only be achieved by simulating the power converters on FPGA, the CPU being uh, too slow and not capable of going at such high rates. The challenge here is that FPGA programming is typically more challenging than CPU programming. What we're seeing here on the table is that for standard power grid simulation in AC systems, typical time steps between 20 to 50 microseconds are viable and can be achieved on CPU technologies. But when we want to simulate high frequency power electronics, then we're talking about typical time steps between 200 to 800 nanoseconds, therefore uh, needing the FPGA technology. Our solution to this at OpalRT is called EHS, which is our electrical hardware solver. And this allows us to simulate fast power converter circuits with time steps ranging from 150 nanoseconds to 2 microseconds. Okay? And the main advantage of this solution is that you do not need any FPGA expertise or FPGA programming in order to achieve this. It has direct interfaces with well-known power electronic simulation tools such as SimPower Systems, PSIM, Plex, and Multisim. Uh, of course, you can test different scenarios and change different parameters without rebuilding any code. And eventually, EHS is a perfect tool for you to achieve controller hardware in the loop, C-Hill, real-time simulations. Now, this is good for attending the second challenge, and we saw that Artemis SSN was good to uh, attend the first challenge. Well, the interesting uh, idea here is that EHS is actually interfaced with the slower AC systems running at 20 to 50 microseconds on standard multi-core simulators using Artemis SSN. Therefore, both tools can be combined together for full microgrid real-time simulation. We will now present you four different microgrid applications uh, that you might uh, be looking at. The first application is multi-agent systems. Okay? In multi-agent systems, there is a need for real-time interaction between all the microgrid components. Ultimately, the idea is to be able to achieve controller hardware in the loop with an objective closed loop time of one microsecond or even faster. And there's a need to have detailed power converter simulation, therefore uh, using dedicated solvers for power electronics, having fast sampling analog inputs and analog outputs for uh, different types of measurements, and fast sampling of digital input and digital output for pulse width modulation types of signals. So, what we're seeing is that we're simulating a virtual microgrid where actual controllers are available in the lab and have direct interaction with the simulator. So we're talking wind turbine controllers, PV controllers, energy storage controllers, or other type of controllers. Now, we understand that you typically might not have access to all those controllers in the lab or they not, might not be all uh, readily available. So at OpalRT, we can provide you with additional uh, hardware boards based on Texas Instruments microcontrollers, which can run the control logic and interact with the real-time simulation of a microgrid. And such controllers can be interfaced and interconnected together in order to ensure that you're really having a multi-agent system simulation. The second application is based on supervisory control, where instead of interfacing the real-time simulation with the controllers directly, we interface ourselves with a supervisory controller or SCADA system. Okay? So in this case, the virtual grid is being simulated and interact with an actual SCADA system. We need to make sure that we can monitor and report various measurements and, of course, we need to make sure that we can use time-critical communication networks such as IEC 61850, C37118, DNP3, Modbus, OPC, and IEC 104. All this integrated for supervisory control. 
one well-known application now is power hardware in the loop, okay? So when it's related to microgrid, we're talking about an interface between a virtual grid and actual emulators, inverters, motors. We need to make sure that we have increased stability due to the fact that power amplifiers are now in the loop. And one of the challenge of this application is actually selecting the right power amplifier based on uh, your needs. So depending on the power, the bandwidth, uh, is it a two quadrant versus four quadrant, AC versus DC, sampling frequency, um, all those elements have to be taken into account to select the right power amplifiers. At Opal RT, we're working with various third-party manufacturers uh, of amplifiers, so we can help you uh, selecting the right one for your application. And uh, in this case, the real-time simulator um, simulating the virtual grid is actually interfaced with a power amplifier, which then connects to uh, wind turbine emulators, PV emulators, grid loads, and uh, motors, inverters. So uh, it's pretty flexible at this level. The fourth application is or microgrid simulation accelerator, okay? So in this case, we're not talking necessarily about real-time simulation, but faster than real-time simulation. So we want to have as fast as possible simulation. For this, we need dedicated processing and computing power. And ultimately, what we want to obtain is faster than real-time results with data recording, which we can reuse using fast commercial off-the-shelf products are uh, easily upgradable in the future and or objectives to run compiled executables. Now, based on our experience here, we have seen that we can have an average accelerator factor of 10 to 1, okay? So this means that, for example, if you want to simulate a 10 seconds phenomena and that this simulation takes you 60 seconds to achieve an offline simulation, uh, it would take you 10 seconds in real time, and you could eventually achieve six seconds in faster than real time. So you can think that for all the PhD students out there, instead of finishing your degree in six years, maybe you'll be able to finish it in five years. Brief overview of our capabilities based on those application, well, we have different solutions and they allow you to cover the complete spectrum of power systems and power electronics found in microgrid applications. And all those solutions are actually running on the same hardware platform. And those solutions can actually interact between themselves for uh, co-simulation at various simulation time steps. We will now be presenting the first poll. Okay, we have two polls uh, during this presentation. So we would like to have your input on the following question. In your research, what are the main microgrid applications? And this is a multiple choice question, so you can select more than one. And you have a few seconds to answer between multi-agent systems, supervisory control, power hardware in the loop, microgrid simulation accelerator, or other. And um, feel free, if you select other, we have the chat, you could uh, list us what are your uh, main applications. <laughs> 